I have realized uh, I'm, I'm a person who was always behind the camera. So I was comfortable over there and uh, asked to show my models, my subject and creating content around that. The shoot began at 9 p.m. That's the first time I've done such a late night shoot. Went up till 4 or 5 a.m. Uh, wrapped up and within a couple of hours I had my flight so flew back to Delhi. Now again I'm in the negative phase. So again it's a stress, okay, so what kind of content should I put? Should I put really good content and then waste it or should I put really average content and just let it, this phase pass by? Everyone give me a good you know, confidence boost, okay, okay, fine. I can be in front of the camera and not always behind the camera and do a good job as well. Hello and welcome to the Social Kandura Podcasts. Today we are very excited to bring to you a college super senior of mine and a very renowned photographer and videographer, Fazan. Thank you for having me. Welcome to <laughs> Pleasure the, to be here. Welcome to the show. It's lovely Thank to meet you after so long. Same here. Uh, Fazan and I go back to college days. He was my super, super senior. And it's so great to see you over here and all the great things that you've achieved. It's really interesting to see you out on Instagram and everything else. Very happy to see everything is going on. Um, you've always been into photography, mm -hmm. I think from college itself. And yeah, I uh, think uh, grad, uh, master's, uh, I think first semester we had a photography session. Right. And I think I had a Sony DG cam back then. Mm -hmm. So I started off with that, uh, used to click basic pictures. Then uh, second year, I think I got my DSLR. Mm -hmm. yeah. Then I moved to Delhi. Delhi, someone told me wedding scene is good. So continue your photography. Yeah. So it started as a hobby initially. And then became a profession altogether. It moved on. It that. moved on altogether. So you learned on the go. On the go, yes. It was primarily, I would say, learned through uh, on-hand experiences, YouTube, websites right, yeah. back then, whatever few websites that he has to have back then. So many things yeah. that I used, referenced, did mistakes as well and then learned through it. Correct. Yeah. And what are like, for example, you know, any photographer, any videographer, they always look up to certain styles of shots. Mm -hmm. And I've seen that, you know, you don't follow a particular style. You mm -hmm. go with, you're, you're very open to experimentation mm -hmm. with every type of thing that can be done as well. Be it an outdoor shoot, be it a product shoot, or be it you know all of these different type of brands that you're working with. What's the most fun shoot that you have? Do you prefer doing something outdoors where it's like the brand is like you know do whatever you want to, or do you want to script it down and then like work on exactly what they want to be doing from a technical pers perspective as well? Yeah, honestly, I'm a delight person. I prefer mm -hmm. shooting as much as because this the free light is the best light in my opinion. Sun is the best True. light that True. one could effort uh, in my opinion. And fun campaign. I mean, I've done many. I can't recall when I did a, a recent shoot in Bombay for Kohler. That was very fun. It was a team of 10 stylists, makeup artists, models, the client, myself and my team. That was a fun shoot. Uh, we shot, the shoot began at 9 p.m. That's the first time I've done such a late night shoot. Went up till 4 or 5 a.m. Uh, wrapped up and within a couple of hours I had my flight. So flew back to Delhi. So that was fun in the recent times I remember. And there was, a, I was an Oppo brand ambassador for a couple of years. So during that time, the initial few phases I did very average videos. I was not happy with it. One fine day, Oppo luckily said, uh, we want to try this, how to do videos, like behind the scene kind of content. I started, initially I was not happy with it because you know, it's like I'm giving my tricks away. But then uh, I saw the response that people, uh, people really liked it. It was getting good engagement. And I thought, okay, this maybe this is a sign that I should do more of this content. It does well as well. And uh, people uh, look forward to this. So f from there onwards, uh, the more videos I made of how to's or behind the scenes, they did really well. My engagement picked up, my followers picked up, more brands uh, started approaching me. Mm -hmm. So that was a fun two years that I had with Oppo, where I was really exploring my limits. And also yeah. the fact, I think that because a lot of these, like you said, photographers, they don't want to share their tricks. Mm -hmm. But if someone starts sharing on how to do this, they automatically become like a thought leader. Mm -hmm. They automatically define them to be the leader of the space that, you know, hey guys, I tried something like this and then people start following and I think brands take that into notice as well. But photography as, you know, as a sense, because you are, you know, photographer and a lifestyle vlogger as well. A mm -hmm. lot of photographers Instagram page is just the pictures that they've taken. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, they don't share themselves or they don't talk about their life and all of those things. Uh, but your Instagram or like your pro pro profile is like there's a lot of you as well. So when was that point that you looked at it and you're like, you know what, this is going to be my X factor. This is going to be my distinguishing factor that I'm going to put my face there as well. And I'm going to be talking as well. Hmm. How did that come across and was it just an accident that you... So this again, uh, I've realized uh, I'm, I'm a person who was always behind the camera. So I was comfortable over there and uh, asked to show my models, my subject and creating content around that. 
uh, one fine day or maybe there were few instances where I showed a glimpse of me in the BTS while holding a camera or doing some kind of action and then I compared the both the videos the video which had me and the video that didn't have me it was twice the engagement that you get in videos that, that had me and also uh, an influencer relative of mine uh, he's my brother-in-law he's also an influencer he told me as much as possible see if you can co- incorporate yourself in the content that content tends to do much better than where you're not there so I did that and I did see a significant difference so now I make sure any reel any video that I put up the initial 3, 5, 10 seconds it's me talking it's either me or me talking that tends to do way better than me just showing what this is my subject this is what I did this is the work I did so that's when uh, I from there onwards I even got a confidence okay okay, fine I, I'm on the heavier side right, rise of now let me just work out let me get let me groom up myself let me uh, upscale my life uh, my styling as well from there onwards every, th- every little thing that I did added on and uh, this is the product that you have that you <laughs> the get to product see that you yeah, it, it, my wife's styling always goes with it uh, my beauty care <laughs> that oh, men yes, have started getting course, into the, yeah. again is taken care of by, by my wife inputs by my brother-in-law who is an influencer as well who keeps giving constant inputs so it's a culmination of everyone coming together and sort of like helping me okay Faisan you can do this you, ha- you speak well you do this you look presentable all that things came together and I think everyone give me a good you know, confidence boost okay okay fine I can be in front of the camera and not always behind the camera and do a good job as well yeah it does the issue does happen when I trust someone else to do the content so that's what my uh, too much of back and right? forth too much of back and forth okay no you don't get it right in fact I show them a reference sometimes nowadays I make sure I carry a reference okay this is what you need to do again it's like 10 out of 2 times people get it right so, but it's, it's okay. like those memes right like, it's like those memes which I, which the, I make in fact it's like it's like you know the fo- the photograph that my friends click of me exactly. and the photograph that I click of them exactly. so it's like completely different <laughs> as well uh, but in terms of content creation as well you know the scene has changed so much mm-hmm. back when instagram just used to be a platform where you would just share your vacation pictures to all of those things you know you've been on on it for i think 10 12 years mm-hmm. now What's the transition that you've seen from the point where you joined in and you just said that, you know, I want to showcase my thing to now where brands are approaching you from an influencer, from a content creator point of view and not from a photographer point of view, mm-hmm. uh, something which we were discussing offline as well. You see that thing growing up in the, in, you know, in the industry or is it something that you see which is like a temporary phase with influencer content marketing and... See, uh, I would just want to plug in one word which, which has become a trend these days. Uh, the mental health factor. Now, back then, when I started 2012-13, uh, I used to have, I think, 5,000 followers. Uh, when Instagram came to Android, I was using an Android phone t- uh, until that, that point. And, uh, and I had a decent 1,000 or 5,000 followers. I don't remember the exact number. And I was getting good brands. Nokia, Huawei, Honor. These brands used to reach out to me and I used to, I used to do activities with them. It was chilled back then. They would just give the camera, okay, just post anything, just click pictures, just give us credit. That's a bit simple. No brainers in that. And I would get paid as well. But now it's a constant, uh, what do you say, it's like a competition. You have to be that lucky influencer who gets onboarded by that particular brand, mm-hmm. creating content. And then once you post the content, you are upset that it didn't cross 5,000, 10,000 views. Uh, it didn't do well, your friends are not commenting. Uh, so m- along with the development that Instagram or social media has come, many other things also came along. The finances obviously got better. The mental issues uh, came along with it, the competition. I think the list just goes on and on. I mean, and, and every six months, uh, Instagram has a bad it's habit of changing algorithm altogether. Okay. You break your head over it again. Like uh, when I moved here, I was growing. Every week, I was putting five, ten k followers, a, th- a thousand followers, and then there was a lull period where it started reducing. So again, mm. that was a stress for me. Okay, did I did I wrong did decision? I wrong? Yeah, yeah, by moving to Dubai is, is Dubai not doing well for me? But then again, there was a phase when it picked up. So it's been happening. Now again, I'm in the negative phase. Mm. So again, it's a stress. Okay, sh- what kind of content should I put? Should I put really good content and then waste it? Or should I put really average content and just let it, this phase pass by? So it's a constant tussle with social media nowadays. And, and unlike back then where you had uh, only blog to take care of, YouTube to a certain extent and Instagram and Facebook mm. and Twitter as well. Uh, now with so many platforms, you're just breaking your head of what things will work out and what will not work exactly. out. And it is a pretty stressful factor that you wake up in the morning and you're like, oh shit, you know, I've lost so many followers. And it does put you down in the perspective that does this type of content not work with my audience? Mm-hmm. For example, you know, you move from Delhi and you move from India and then now to Dubai. Now, all of a sudden, the people that follow you for, for example, you know, secret tricks around, Dubai, around Delhi, around Bombay, all of a sudden, they're seeing Dubai content mm-hmm. and they're like, I can't resonate with this. Like, mm-hmm. this does not relate to me. Mm-hmm. The unfollows start happening. 
But at the same time, the Dubai audiences they start discovering you, and then they're like, "Oh wow, this guy posts cool content. Okay, let me follow him." So it's I think it's a dip and drop of mm-hmm. as you as you go across. But how much does that really, uh, you know, help you plan of okay? I put let's say for example, I posted something about me having a coffee in the morning, and I got hundred and followers. But at the same time, if I post me having coffee in the evening, I get three hundred more followers. Um, does that change the way you post content? Does there some strategy or a plan that goes into this or? See initially. Moment, uh, initially, has to plan it out. Okay, uh, I need to put my reel at this particular time. I need to put this kind of content on my timeline, and then obviously there was uh, like one video would do better. BTS videos, my mm-hmm. BTS videos tend to do way better than a normal video of me oh, really? going around uh, or even traveling for that matter. But now I've I've I've, I've told myself, okay, I'm not going to be bothered about numbers. Let me just put out content that I personally enjoy. It mm-hmm. gets the likes, doesn't get like, doesn't matter. I'll stick to me being happy, putting what content I want my audience to see eventually. If I keep doing what they like, then I might be doing something else altogether. To be honest, so mm-hmm. now I've told myself, convinced myself, okay, Nafizan, don't listen to the algorithms. Stick Do to it. what you enjoy doing the best. And even in terms of cameras, even in terms of you know equipments, because you know we over here we try to use cameras for doing Instagram reels instead of just using an iPhone. Do you think Instagram rewards people that create this very high quality content using? uh good cameras 4k 8k or do you think it rewards based on the content you could be on an iphone you could be on a high resolution camera what's your uh, experience based on that from a creator's point of view again i think i uh, t- uh, have a mixed uh, in t- uh, take on this uh, i've seen uh, average content shot on a very basic 1000 uh, dirham phone doing really good at the same time someone shooting on an iphone or even camera for that matter not doing that good as well so i think it's again the instagram algorithm it's a mix of everything your content If your quality is average, but the content is really good, funny, or really valuable, it does well. Sometimes you put in the best of production, best of light, best of camera, and then your content is average. It, it doesn't do well. So you need to evaluate what works out. Keep posting, keep trying out because Instagram again keeps changing the algorithms. So at the same time, you also keep experimenting. Okay, this is not working out for me. This works. This works, and so on. The music is very important. The the X factor, the the hold for the video that a person has an initial bit, yeah. the quality. Uh, again, camera equipment. I, I don't think it's much of a difference because I still know many people who use a basic phone. Uh, some people who use an iPhone. Some use DSLR cameras. Some even use red uh, red uh, cameras. Red cameras so it's years. mix of uh, mix of everything. It's just not equipment. It's about everything. Your content has to be brilliant. The production has to be brilliant. Camera could be anything, but again, make sure using the best equipment. uh so i think seven eight categories hashtags location tags mute trending audios all this combined together and the message and the information that i think the three f- three categories that i had read does well uh, education uh, f- comedy okay. funny humor yeah. i forgot the third one i think how to's or diy or DIYs, something diy yeah, this is one uh, comic comedy uh, content was one and there was a third content as well which so if you put around uh, these three things it tends to do way better than mm. just putting out a generic video And what is the biggest barrier that you see for new content creators that are, let's say, moving from India? Uh, very recently, I was seeing some very big car vlogger had also also moved here, and you know he bought a new car, and he was talking about his experience, everything. What is the biggest, uh, you know, bottleneck that you see with content creators that are now moving to moving to Dubai and want to establish themselves over mm-hmm. here? What's one of the biggest con- block that they see that they need to sort of overcome? Mm, I think, to be honest, uh, there's no hurdle as such, but maybe the the population. Like, if you make a video in India. it reaches out to all the 1.3 billion population billion, that yeah, india has exactly. whereas here i think it's what one third of that one fourth of that it could be million, yeah, yeah 11 million yeah so in terms of reach yes you do see a drop but otherwise if you keep doing whatever content you are putting up uh, you will still get the likes and uh, one, if you have moved here as such focus to doing what you're doing and uh, i think again the algorithm how how the instagram algorithm works after a point it will start showcasing your videos to the local audience as well the local content will show up more on, on your timeline you'll see what what's trending in this particular location so that will help the one thing that i have realized has been uh, uh, problematic for me back in delhi i used to see the trending audios so i know okay these are 10 15 20 trending audios it's working for me let me use it but uh, initial 3 months i had it in dubai but ever since then i've not been having it so i keep reaching out to my assistant back in india i tell him listen what are the trending audios share it with me what's trending share it with me I'll make content accordingly. Mm. So that's one uh, thing that I've, I've been feeling is happening. I don't know if Instagram is not active in Dubai altogether, or there's maybe there's some Certain glitch, or they forgot to give me that particular feature. Because I think I've seen my Android phone. I have Android phone as well backup. 
that is that on that instagram looks different the correct, hashtags correct. the kind of videos yes, yes. uh sometimes it shows the trending audios but on my on my phone that i'm using right now the iphone it doesn't show for some reason so i'm not sure mm. whether it's a glitch or maybe it's but uh, area by area specific uh, problem of not showing the trending audios interesting yeah. interesting and there are a lot of people you know closing questions just before we go a lot of people have been watching your journey from you know 5 years 6 years and whatever and a lot of photographers now look up to you you know they want to be like you they want to shoot like you a lot of photographers might be able to shoot similar to what you're mm-hmm. shooting but they are following your footsteps mm-hmm. okay if i don't did this i'm going to do that you know i'm sure you know of these mm-hmm. people and you know to that as well what's your word of advice to to these people you know how do they proceed in life how do they go ahead any words of wisdom any words of inspiration for these guys anything that you would like to add to them i think uh, i keep playing this to literally everyone uh, just enjoy the process don't be bothered if you have copied someone you like if i put up a reel people tend to re- try to replicate that and the process they do fails a couple of times even like even when i see some content on on instagram i think oh this is an amazing content let me try it out it has happened so many times where i try to replicate it i failed once twice third time then i nailed it so i keep telling them just in this process at least you learned how to do one video that you saw then as you grow forward your creative process also takes over after a point you become someone who creates a very original content uh and obviously get better at photography for that matter be it on your smartphone or your dslr or, or content creation as such overall so keep trying out everything uh if you're copying it's okay initially but do give credit like i make it make it a point to say okay i got inspired by this particular person or i got this idea from so and so place yeah yeah so i keep doing that at the same time you try out like even for of you that matter it started that way someone like to portrait of someone they tried replicating it they got the right picture maybe initially they didn't get it right and then they got better mm. so try it out just enjoy the process don't be you know bogged down by the algorithm changing the how how many likes you're getting how many views comments you're getting Just enjoy the process, create content, and I'm sure the numbers will follow. And what's your last take on trolls as well? I think that's a problem that <laughs> all content creators suffer. Mm-hmm. There are always keyboard warriors. How do you handle trolls? How do you uh, how does it how do you not let it affect you? Because that's something that any big content creator has to face with, and it's unfortunate mm-hmm. of life. But how do you get over it? What are your uh, you know trips or tricks to your own self? how do you uh, manage those okay i'm very selective with when this when it comes to trolls so but at some times when when i'm very irritated and i want to get back to them i do that i reply to them uh, on if if they've commented on my video then i do reply to them sometimes i feel okay no it's it doesn't matter it doesn't matter what he or she says just ignore it sometimes also fortunately uh, since instagram has others folder i do once in a while check it but i know some of it will be negative some of it will be positive so i just run through it and within i think i also i think i have a very goldfish memory so within 5 oh, seconds of reading or 10 seconds of reading forget. i forget things so <laughs> that works out in That's my favor it's a very favor. good thing to have <laughs> so yeah so i don't uh, carry forward all the stress that people share on my my feed i just move on <laughs> thank you so much for spending so much time with us it was thank absolute you. pleasure to re know you in the past 10 years where things has happened uh, all the very best in thank dubai you. and definitely we'll keep seeing you more for definitely definitely we should catch up as well beyond beyond this uh, podcast definitely. we should we should